welcome to the world of posh porn. A new porn shop is opening every month in the UK. Hiya guys, you alright? But few can boast a clientele of gentry and jet setters. We are completely different to any other pawnbroker. I mean, most people deal in gold, diamonds, watches. We deal in absolutely everything. He's getting rid of his submarine. Jesus! That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. It is, isn't it? Keeping the glitterati supplied with banknotes is former property developer James Constantino. I mean, look, there's a 30 grand handbag there, Hermes. We've got a Banksy original here, 150 grand. I don't know anyone else quite like James, to be fair. I'm happy to present you with an offer of 100 grand. <laughs> <laughs> he seems very aloof, as if he's not taking much notice of what's going on, but actually he really is. Underneath all that cool exterior... <laughs> I haven't got much bigger. He's actually... Very steely determined businessman, really. Oh my god, it doesn't look so stupid once you've got it on. James set up his first pawn shop in Well Hilled, Surrey, six years ago. What sort of money are you looking for? I was looking for about four to five thousand pounds if possible. And has been expanding ever since. We started off in Weybridge and then in 2011 we opened Richmond. The business was growing at such a rate we really needed a central London store and that's why we opened in Hatton Garden. But moving to new premises has meant relinquishing some control over his empire. We've got new members of staff. Joy uh, is here, she's controlling our e-shops. We've got Alicia and Michael at the front desk who are um, trying to hold the full and it's, they're under a lot of pressure. Um, Joe speaking. And we've got this... Um, Hello. This, Girl here. Joe speaking. Joe is customer relations. I don't understand what the, what, what it even means, what you're saying to me. When you need a delicate touch, we send her in to deal with it. We've decided that's not for us. All right. Cheers, thanks, bye. Good morning, Christine. Alicia speaking. How can I help? Despite having three stores to look after, James still likes to oversee all the big deals personally. This is amazing especially if the items need a test run. Joe, yeah? look at this. This fella's got a boat out in Parma and uh, he wants to raise some money, look. Blimey, that's nice. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that, that is, is nice. That is absolutely amazing. That's a, a sailboat? Yeah. That is lovely. That's the sort of island hopping kind of boat. I can see you up there, front of there, jug of sangria. Playing bingo. Ah. I suppose you'll insist on trying it out, won't you? Well, of course I will. Be rude not to. Johnny Gear. Steve, a bit more this way. Steve, Steve, a bit more that way. Get a the 45 foot sailboat belongs to 42 year old entrepreneur Steve. I can't see the um, branding. That way. Basically, we're doing a photo shoot, but most of our photo shoots are done with a bit of humour. So this time, I'm a pirate on the floating beanbag. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I have to do for the company. This is another day in the office. <sighs> I can't beat this. After running a successful recruitment agency in the UK, three years ago, Steve left it all behind for a life on the ocean waves. Some people buy Ferraris, so I just decided to buy a, a yacht. It was crazy, but that's what I do, I take risks. And I think if you don't take risks, you never get the reward. But last month, Steve's adventures with his girlfriend, Sammy, took a life-changing turn. This is, a, this is baby Dylan. He's usually more well-behaved than this, I have to say, but they, they say never work with children or animals. For the first time in my life, I've got some serious responsibilities. Um, so I need to start behaving and make some money. <laughs> they stopped him crying. To earn the cash he so desperately needs, Steve has embarked on a new business venture with his friend Ben. Hi, oh, Steve. Ben, how are we doing? Test ride. Test ride. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the idea is a company called Puff Daddy. We make designer bean bags and flexible furniture. <laughs> They're incredibly comfortable, incredibly flexible, uh, indoors, outdoors, in the pool, one for the baby, one for the dog, 
and uh, they're fantastic. If they want to have their names on the boats... This is for the bespoke range. This is for the bespoke range. I'm in for about 70 grand already, so is my business partner, and it's going to require another, probably another 150 to get the product launched to market. Um, I'm all in on this, and I like last chance saloon, so we need this to work. And Steve can only see one way of raising that kind of capital. I've got to get rid of the boat and concentrate on work and um, concentrate on putting food on the table for my son, really. He needs money fast and is banking on pawn shop boss James to come up with a buyer. I'll be happy between the 145-150k mark. I really am on my last pounds. And if I don't do something, I'm going to struggle. Steve wants to sell his sailboat. Good afternoon, Prestige Pawn Brokers. JMO speaking. How can I help? But some of the pawn shop's clients are looking for a loan. Got an Amiga watch here. I just wondered if you could give me a valuation on it, please. The principle of pawnbroking is very simple. A client brings an asset to us, we value it, and we lend a percentage of the item's value. It couldn't be more straightforward. <laughs> Over 500 people a week walk into the pawn shops needing extra cash. And at the end of a busy Friday for new Hatton Garden manager Alicia, there's one final customer. Hello. Hello, hi. How can I help? Love the horse. Oh, thank I you. I love that horse. It's amazing. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name is Alicia. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice so, to meet you. you're looking to sell or a pawn? Yes, yes. Um, probably sell um, or pawn, I don't know, depending. On, on the value. prices. Yes. Okay, so you you'd prefer to just get the most money out of the bags. Yes. Okay. Let's have a look at the bags. Yes, certainly. This is Hermes. It's a Birkin. Um, I've only used it once. It's all calf leather inside. Sure. Okay, so this is Louis Vuitton. This is the Louis Vuitton. Yes, and they're mint condition. Okay. How much are you looking to? Well, I don't know. I know they're both appreciation value. Of course. Yes. Okay. And... I leave the ball in your court. Okay. Of course. <laughs> And voila. We'll do our best and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. And hopefully we'll get the deal done soon. Okay, okay thank you. Nice meeting you, Rosie. Nice meeting you. Rosie. Thank, nice you, meeting you. thank you, thank you. Come on. This way, my man. That's it. Good boy. Come on. Come on, babies. Come on. There we go. Come on, John. Animal lover and fashionista Rosie lives in North London with her husband Ross, their three dogs, Daisy. two cats, a parrot called Polly, right, I'm just going to check on the bears to make sure they're OK, and 180 bears. Make sure everybody's happy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the television is on 24 hours a day because that's what they like. I rescue bears. I clean them up and put new clothes on them and they come, they come to life. This is Mr. Bobbles. This is little Clover. This is Daisy. Not one of them is the same. They all have completely different faces. They all have completely different bodies. Some have actually put on weight. Don't ask me how or why or what, I don't know. It's Rosie's hobby. I think she's a bit over the top with 180, but what do I know? I'll just go with the flow. Eccentricity, darling. It runs in my family. The Dutch side. So let's do it on this side here. Both in their 60s, Rosie and Ross have been married for 24 years and have always enjoyed the good life. I've always mixed with the rich and famous, and I was queen of the clubs. I inherited a fortune, millions, but I spent it on high living, expensive clothes, beluga and crook. What do you think if I wear this tonight? Look at me. I'm fabulous. What am I going to wear tonight? Well, we're discussing me at the moment, darling, all right? I will not be um, ageing gracefully at all. I'm vain. I admit it, I'm vain. You, know, you make the best of what you can from yourself. Now Rosie believes she's got a business idea that targets a gap in the fashion market. It's haute couture 
clothes for dogs. The one thing that all these um, girls with their little pooches are all wanting so terribly much is to have a boutique with doggy clothes and accessories. And to be quite honest with you, in this country, there is very limited. So I decided, right, we'll, we'll design them, but we'll do them properly. The inspiration for her canine clothes was Rose's beloved Chihuahua Bam Bam, who was tragically killed by a pit bull a year ago. We, we, I always have a candle in it here for Bam Bam, and this is his own. Bam Bam's this learn. And Bam Bam's picture. Bam Bam died on the 31st of October at 2.21 in the morning. I've been making clothes for dogs since I got Bam Bam. And that's when the idea of Bam Bam Boutique arose. Bam Bam was going to be the star, but now it's in memory of Bam Bam. There we go. That's my little leg. Pop that in. Who is a pretty girl? Come, see what you think, darling. Hello. It's not quite finished yet. Oh, hello. Yeah. Lovely. To fund her designer dog wear range, Rose is relying on selling two designer accessories of her own. Obviously, I don't know how much they cost because my husband bought them for me as a present. The Louis Vuitton was bought us in their main shop in um, Bond Street, and the Hermes was bought in Hermes in Bond Street. <laughs> Oi, behave yourself. I'm hoping to get um, about 20,000, because that would get the boutique up and running. In the end, they're just bags. They're not Bam Bam. They're not Bam Bam. But will Rosie's designer bags be worth enough to get her boutique up and running? Serving Surrey's elite. Hello. Good afternoon. Prestige Pawnbrokers has managed to make a name for itself. It's phenomenal. You're talking a good amount of money. Good man. Now with its headquarters in Hatton Garden, London's famed jewellery quarter, Boss James is finding his own success somewhat overwhelming. It's been mad here, it really has. It's been absolutely crazy. And as you can see, because it's gone so manic, we're actually tripping up. There's bags, handbags, art, all sorts of things all over the place. And we've actually realised that we need a bigger premises. What do you think? Luckily, a bit of investigation has uncovered some empty office space just next door. When James started talking about expanding the office, I felt like I'd only just recovered from getting us in Hatton Garden. And I was thinking, oh, no, here we go again. This is where you come in with a cup of tea and some biscuits and so forth. <laughs> You'll be going like this and <laughs> going like that. He's got that Midas touch. One week later, the ball's rolling, there's a great big office space and we're taking it on. What I thought about as well, which I've asked them to leave, is I'm going to attach this to your belt loop at lunchtime so you don't go far. While there's expansion in store for Hatton Garden, it's business as usual for Lawrence in Weybridge. Ooh, wow. And he's received an email that's right up his street. This is actually really quite unusual. It looks like a guitar signed by the whole of Oasis, which is a very, very nice item. And the fact you get both brothers, the fact they haven't killed each other, is actually quite a result as well. So I know a few people would love that. I'd love to get my hands on this. I don't play guitar, I've found one of the most talentless people I know. The guitar belongs to mum of three, Angela. Angela remarried a year and a half ago and is in the midst of remodelling her new deluxe family home in Brighton. Started the renovation about six weeks ago and we had to, we had to knock a wall down. And so there's been lots of crashing and banging and noise and dust. Putting in a state-of-the-art kitchen has meant the family has had to decamp to the back of the house. It's cool, it's just like having um, the caravan on water in some ways. We've had to put our combination oven microwave in the bedroom with the coffee machine on top. You know, you've got to eat, so this is what we're doing. It's a bit makeshift, but it works. Oh, come on in, come on in, my darling. The boat might be a temporary stopgap, but Angela's keen to crack on with her three-storey renovation and has enlisted the help of close friend and interior designer, Gillian. 
Oh, it's so lovely in the sunny room, isn't it? Okay, I shall show you what I thought. Now we're doing a slightly five-star hotel look, but in a cosy version. Oh, a little bit of glamour. Me. Is that really me? No, I haven't seen the top floor. With a wish list of high-end fittings, Angela is looking to raise some extra cash. Dying to show you the guitar. I'm dying to see it. And has a master plan to sell some special memorabilia. Wow, lovely condition. Oh wow! That's cool, isn't that it? is amazing. <laughs> It's signed by the uh, original members of, of Oasis. Oh, it takes you back to your Oasis days, It takes hey? me back to my youth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad to see it go, mm. but um, if it can make somebody um, happy, that's good. I think you've made the right decision. Okay. And it would just end up in the loft again, which would be very sad. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? What a, wa what a waste, really. There will be people out there that would pay anything to get their hands on such a beautiful guitar with the signatures of um, a band such as Oasis. So I think £10,000 would be a good starting price. Prestige, Joy speaking. Opening a branch in the centre of London's diamond trade has extended Prestige's international clientele. Could you give me a call back this afternoon? Today, Hatton Garden's new manager, Alicia, has the chance to win new business with a dealer from Italy. Hello. Hi. I have this bracelet wow. and I would like to know how much I can pawn it for. Oh, wow. Would you like to come in? Yes. What would you like to do with the bracelet? I have this client of mine, he wants to pawn it and he wants to get some money out of it for four or six months. Do you know the total carat weight? No, he hasn't told me that. Mm. Any price ideas? Yes, my client would like to, to get uh, around 20,000 euros. Herbert spends one week a month doing business in the capital. Yes. London, big money. So that's the best place where to try and sell things. Despite being a regular in the city, today is a new experience for Herbert. It's the first time I, I use a pawn shop, and I actually think that it could be a, a, a good option, a second choice for my client. Because not everybody wants to sell things, but everybody needs money. So the pressure's on for Alicia. I was really excited to be able to help Herbert with finding a price for his item. It was my first big deal and I wanted to make sure it's spot on. Alicia's new to the team, so there's a little bit of risk involved when giving her the Herbert deal. We hired her for her knowledge on high-end items and who knows what the future holds with Herbert. He could come back and it could be a really big one for us. It's an outstanding piece of jewellery, but it's always good to get someone to confirm that what I'm thinking is actually right. To get a second opinion, Alicia's taking the bracelet to jewellery expert Ian. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> good to see you. you. Mm. Mm. Good to see you. It's a big bag. Yeah, but a very small thing. <laughs> very small thing. <laughs> it's amazing. OK. As you say, it's a small thing in a very big bag. <laughs> <laughs> Mmm, oh wow, well. wow. Nice. Look at that, lovely work. Neat, clean lines, very well done. I mean, the stones are not huge or anything like that, but they're good quality. Yeah. And um, good colour, good clarity. It's in very good condition. Whoever's had it has looked after it. There's a lot of diamond in here, so let's take that into account and go with my collection. <laughs> Added to all of these. Oh my God, isn't this getting vulgar? <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Really is lovely. Well, good luck to him. Thank you very much. And good luck to you, my darling. Thank you. Okay. Take it then. Thank, Thank you. you for Take it. Good luck. Okay. Ian seems impressed, but will that be enough to get Herbert the money for his client? Across town, despite a trip to Parma in Mallorca on the horizon, James is feeling a bit under the weather. <coughs> oh, God. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm on medication. Um, <laughs> Need to be. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'll be fine, you know, I'll just soldier on. Got a bit of a cold, nothing much, nothing I can't cope with. Soldier on? <laughs> soldier on? 
You've come in asking, please, would you get me this? Please, don't feel very well today. <laughs> James may have the sniffles, but Patrick's sense of smell is as sharp as ever. Stinks tobacco. He's assessing client Rosie's handbags. But when I first got the bags, my first impression was they didn't look right, they didn't smell right, they certainly didn't smell of the money. But after talking to Rosie, I thought I'd give them the benefit of the doubt and have another look at them. I'm looking for symmetry on the logo, stitching, quality of the hardware. It just doesn't look good to me, this one. I don't, I'm not happy with the lining. But very marked, average condition. Let's have a look at this. Every, everything about this bag, to me, just isn't right. Uh, the leather isn't great. The stamping is not good, the, the embossing is not good, the lock's wrong, keys are wrong, stitching's not great. <laughs> no, what do you think? It stinks as well. This one. Can, you, can you smell the money on that? Oh, Jesus, it smells something on it, it ain't money. <laughs> so they smelt like the inside of a wide red Statson minicab. There was definitely something not quite right about the Birkin bag. The condition of it was really, really poor. To start her canine clothing boutique, owner Rosie was hoping her bags would fetch £20,000. These predominantly are very good sellers. Louis Vuitton have had this style around for a long, long time, and it's one of their best sellers. I was sort of 50-50 uh, on it, whether I want to actually take it in or not. Rosie's couture for dogs hangs in the balance. It's Monday morning at Hatton Garden HQ. Prestige. And before he jets off to sunny Palmer to visit Steve and his sailboat, James is overseeing the office expansion. I'm really looking forward to punching through and having my own space where I can't hear um, certain people droning on about stuff. That's out of order. After being poorly last week, the boss had been feeling better. Until now. It's getting on my nerves already, that. I can't have it. I'll take much more of it. Just be careful with that left-hand side. It was an unbelievable piece of luck that we'd be able to punch through that door and end up doubling the size of the space. Oh, that's nice. It's fantastic. It's a bit dusty in here, isn't it? James is a bit of a clean freak. Um, when building work was going on, slightest bit of dust was stressing him out. But then you go and look at his desk, and it's an absolute tip. <laughs> Things are a bit more clean and peaceful at the Weybridge branch, where Angela has arrived with her musical memorabilia. Hello, ladies. Hello. My name's Angela. I've got a guitar here that's been signed by the original Oasis members. Brilliant. And just wonder whether you'd like to have a look. Definitely have a look. I'm a big fan, so... Are you? Yeah. <laughs> OK. I'm being quite excited about seeing this. You ready for this? It's really Whoa. beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is lovely. So I've got to ask you, where did you get this lovely item from? Uh, so my husband won it in a competition that he entered about ten years ago. We used to love Oasis, but I think we've moved on a bit and oh, no, I, have, I haven't moved on. You haven't I moved on, so maybe you'd like it then. <laughs> I'm just a little bit sad. <laughs> no, it's not been played. It's, it's really lived That's most of its life. If what? it's been played, it takes up quite considerably. I would Any... understand that, yeah. yeah. So the golden question, what sort of money are you looking for? We think around about £10,000. OK. So what I'm going to do now, I'll give you a receipt Exciting. for it. Yeah, OK. Um, and we'll go from there. Brilliant. Sounds okay. good. Brilliant. Yep. Well, thank you for bringing this lovely item in. You're welcome. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> you thank too, Thank you very Lawrence. much, and I'll give you a call in a week. Fantastic. I mean, I'm a big fan of Oasis, and I must admit, if I had the money, I'd probably buy it myself. But I think my wife would have something to say about it. But will Lawrence be able to find another enthusiastic fan with £10,000 to spare? <laughs> Italian jewellery dealer Herbert is back at Hatton Garden. He wants €20,000, that's a £15,000 loan, for his client's diamond bracelet. I hope I can get the money that we were hoping to have, the €20,000. I don't know if, if it's going to be good, I hope so. Morning. How are you? Very good. Good, good. Grab a nice seat. How you been? Good. Yeah? You heading back home soon? Yes, I'm going back uh, on Wednesday. You just bought some bits and pieces, have you? Or sold some bits and pieces? I sold a few, few pieces, and, uh, and now I hope to have good news, great news from you. 
Okay, so well, yeah, I mean, we've had a good look at it and it really is a stunning piece. So we're quite pleased with it. Uh, Alicia took it to a few people. We've had a couple of guys look at it in Branch. Everyone was amazed. It is a beautiful piece of jewellery. I mean, you've got around 18 carat worth of diamonds, which is a lot. And then uh, beautiful craftsmanship. I mean, the detail finish, everything is brilliant. Because of that, we are actually we will be able to offer you the money that you're looking for. Oh, that's, that's great, thanks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, you happy with that? Oh, I'm very happy, yeah, yes. so. With his £15,000 loan secured, has Alicia won the Hatton Garden Shop a new international client? This is it's been really good. Probably we're going to see each other soon. Because for me, it's, it's great. I was really pleased for Alicia. She dealt with Herbert superbly, and it was a brilliant result for us. Herbert, thanks for popping in. We'll get the money transferred over to you. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you again. I wasn't sure that I could actually get this sort of money. I didn't know what to expect, so I wasn't very sure about the answer, but the answer was positive, and uh, I'm very happy about that. My client is going to be even much more happier than me because the money's going to go to his bank account. I think from Herbert's point of view, you know, he didn't realise it was quite that easy and he looked a bit shell-shocked as he left. I think, you know, if he's got clients out in Italy that want need to raise some cash, don't want to sell their goods, great, come over here and uh, we'll load him up with more lots of 20. In Weybridge, Lawrence has been tasked with assessing a guitar signed by the members of 90s rock band Oasis. Okay, see you later. See you later. And he's enrolled the help of Britpop expert Rob. Hello, Rob, how are you? Hi. Good to see you. How's it I've got the piece upstairs for you. Fantastic. Hey, nice to see you. you too. Let's hope you're all excited about it. Yeah. I know I was when I saw it. Wow, that's nice. That's the Epiphone Supernova. Uh, they called this Pelham Blue. Yeah. but most of the fans refer to it as, like, Man City Blue. The big Man City fans, of course. Yeah. They actually made these in five different colours, and black, and being the rarest, mm. the, this is the most, most common one. Oh, right. And they were about £500 new. Oh, really? I thought they'd be more expensive, to be quite no, honest with you. No, £500. This one's actually got an old guy who had printed on there. Yeah, Does that make just, it anything special? That's just a facsimile. That's just, that's just for it being a signature guitar. Yeah. These are the, the babies that you'd want to sort of look at. Yeah. And it's a lovely example, and old Gallagher's there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really nice condition as well, and the pickup's lovely. Of course, if it was one that Noel had, had, had played, then you would for 20,000, 30,000. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Robert. Thanks, Lawrence. Good to see you, mate. Cheers, thank you. I'll just walk you down and make sure you get off the premises. Thank you. <laughs> Dealing with memorabilia is pretty straightforward for the pawn shop, but to check Steve's sailboat out, James is having to make a midweek trip to Mallorca. See you later. I've got to go. I've got a plane to catch. The way you carry on sometimes, one would think you own this company. I'll bring you back a packet of uh, tortilla chips. Tortilla chips? I can get them here. Get me something I can't get. Have fun in the sun. Don't burn your bum. James is going off on a business trip, but I'm sure that he's going to stick a little bit of holiday time in there. Oh, I'd love to think that he's going to bring something back for me, but what I get back from James is normally sarcasm, but not a gift. In sun-drenched Palmer, new dad Steve is frantically preparing his sailboat for James's inspection. Still a few more things to do. Um, I've still got the guy polishing down here and uh, just getting a few other things ready. I think we're nearly there, so uh, hopefully everything will be perfect when he turns up. It's vital that I kind of like sell this today if I could, or at least in the next few weeks, because uh, I'm really desperate for the money. So fingers crossed James is going to find the boat in a really good condition. We're doing everything we can to get it ready. Hopefully the paint's going to be dry by the time he turns up. We'll see. Otherwise, we'll have to put wet paint signs everywhere. The boat's ready, but will James think it's worth the £150,000 Steve is after? It looks uh, pretty impressive out there. We're amongst uh, the sailing elite of the world. There's some fantastic yachts there, and uh, I'm really quite excited about seeing his boat. Oh, James! Steve. Over here, buddy. Yep. 
Steve. Hello, Hi, James. All right, mate? You all right? I'm very good. It's a lovely boat. You like it? Oh, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? We've been working hammer and tongue trying to get it ready for you, buddy, I tell you. Well, it looks ready. Yeah? I'll show you, show you around. I'll show you yeah. around. Fantastic. When I first saw the boat in the flesh, I thought, wow, this is absolutely amazing. It was huge. What's this thing like when it's out of sea? Because it's a bit of a monster of a boat. Um, when we're sailing and we're on the side... On the that... side? What do you mean, on the side? I mean, I mean, I can see the bottom of the sea through that window, James. You are joking me, aren't you? No, no, you? I've had the boat where I'm looking at dolphins through that. It's like, it's like living in SeaWorld. Yeah, but today we'd just be... Well, no, I don't know. We could be on the side. It depends on the wind. Am I steering or are you going to drive? I mean, just for getting out of here, I think uh, it's probably best if I drive. Are you, have you got a licence or...? Got a TV licence. Well, I'll take the helm out of here, cos the most damage is done Around other boats. Can I at least hold the steering wheel? You can hold. It? You can hold it. If anyone's looking, at least I look like I'm. All right. Okay. Yeah. You can. You can hold it. Yeah. Here comes the wind. Yep. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. It'll get windy when we get around the corner. At the beginning, I felt absolutely wonderful. I mean, we were out there on the open seas. Everything was going to plan. <laughs> I'm liking it at the minute. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. What? Well, when we get the sail up, it's going to be like a knife through butter. We'll be debobbing. We're going to debob. Everything was going wonderfully, and I said to Steve, I'm just going to pop down to the toilet for two seconds. Have you ever used a marine toilet? Those marine toilets, when you're going along, they're evil. Are they? I mean, you've got to like, literally brace yourself in. He advised me against it, and I thought I didn't quite know what he was talking about. I was only down there for two seconds. I don't quite know what happened. I became all disorientated. You look green, James. You are right. Oh, it's horrible down there. Pardon? Horrible down there. You are right. You want some water? Here. Here. Grab some of that. Cheers. I know. I think Steve actually was trying to be all compassionate to me, and obviously, um, I had my hands on the checkbook as well, so he was trying to look all concerned. Oh, it's horrible it's down there, mate. It is. It's like being in a washing machine. But really, I think he probably thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Not a very good advert for the boat, is it? Oh, f well, as soon as we've got the sails up, you'll feel a lot better. Can you get the main sheet uh, on the winch for me, please? We're going about. Oh, feel that wind. <laughs> I've got about as much chance of selling this as winning the lottery. Who does sailing anyway? Yeah, yeah, come up, come up here, James. You'll feel a lot better if you're actually concentrating on doing something. Yeah. Rather than uh, worrying about how you feel. Come on, take... Focus. So, like, we're just going to steer ahead. Yeah. Look at the horizon. Follow that boat. I don't like anything that moves around too much. No? No. <laughs> All right, Captain. <laughs> Ahoy there. <laughs> Lovely. These uh, seagoing people are wonderful people, you know. <laughs> Mind you, have to be. They're all, <laughs> they're all looking <laughs> after each other when they're sick. <laughs> While pawn shop boss James is in sunny Palmer, his assistant Joe is left holding the fort. Just been outside and it is absolutely tipping down out there. It's all grey. It's soaking wet, everyone looks miserable, and I've just got this horrible vision of James in the sunshine on a yacht, and I'm thinking, why am I always the one left behind? Joe speaking. Joe, it's James, you all right? Oh, hi, yeah, yeah, you all right? How are you doing down there? Not bad, it's absolutely bucketing down outside. Raining? Yeah, is it? Sunny where you are. Yeah, it's quite sunny. I'm quite sunny. Yeah? I've been on this boat all day. Oh, it's good. worse. It's like? worse. An amazing bit of kit, but I want you to do a bit of research. Oh, okay. Do you know anything about uh, seasickness? Are you joking? No. I've been. I felt terrible. I tell you. I've nearly thrown up. It's been horrible. It's been the worst 
<laughs> Seriously, oh, I was no, hanging sorry. over the edge at one point. <laughs> oh no! Oh, so you've been on boats before? Well, I have been on boats before, but not a proper sailing boat. This thing was bobbing up and down, going all over the place. Oh no! Anyway, look. I wouldn't mind if you and some of the others jumped on it and did a bit of research. I want to give him an answer. Really? Um, okay. Tomorrow before I leave. All right. We'll look after you, sir. Oh yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Go and have some fish. Yeah, we'll do. Tada. Bye. So it's a 24-hour wait, but with his baby boy and business depending on a deal from James, Steve's hoping today's efforts have paid off. We will work so hard to get it ready for him, but I'm pretty optimistic he's going to do a good job for me and I really need to uh, get this done, so uh, fingers crossed. We'll see what he comes up with tomorrow. The Hatton Garden headquarters, Joe has just discovered James has been suffering from seasickness out in Palmer. <laughs> I visualised him with his sunglasses. <laughs> now he has his shirts all open and he's like uh, oh dear. living it up. And he's actually had to hang over the side. You know what the good news in that might be? What? The next sailboat that comes up, we might get to go. Maybe you, but not both of us. No, that's true, not both of us. Well, definitely not you then, OK? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Over at the Weybridge shop, owner of the Oasis guitar, Angela, has travelled up from Brighton, hoping for good news from Lawrence. I've been thinking about today such a lot. I'm so excited to see Lawrence, to see what valuation he's given the guitar and to just get a bit of feedback from him. The value is given, it's perfectly fair, and it actually backs up any research I'd done previously to it. So, uh, let's see if Angela takes it. Um, looking, hopefully, in the region of about £10,000. If I was told that the guitar was worth around about that figure, I'd be really dead chuffed and happy days. Hello, Angela, how are you? Hello, Lawrence, I'm well, thanks. How are you? So, here to hear the Good news. To see you, yeah. Let's come upstairs. I'd love to come private. upstairs, yes. I must know, I feel tempted to buy it myself if I it so much, but... <laughs> Why don't you? Well, one thing, my wife would kill me, so <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the main issue. Yeah. On this, actually, it's been quite quick to actually come to evaluation. We've got an expert called Robert, who is absolutely the best at his game on Oasis items. One thing Robert was really excited about was the actual signatures, which I was happy with. There's no doubt about it, they're all genuine. The figure you're actually looking at of 10,000 would actually not be far off if he'd actually used it. Because one did sell that he used for two big concerts for £8,000. OK. Now, however, it's not unique, this guitar. There are there items are out there. OK. If you tried to sell that today to a fan, a genuine fan, you'd get about £1,500 for it. £1,500? £1, oh, my that goodness. They're not that rare, unfortunately. Oh, I thought it I'm would be. I was surprised. I was quite surprised. Like I say, I'm an Oasis fan. I mean, I do know, obviously, dealing with memorabilia, that if an item's actually been used, it always takes the value up considerably. Yeah. Well, we tried. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, I have mixed feelings. I am a little bit disappointed that we haven't achieved the figure that we thought it might go for, but in a funny sort of way, quite relieved as well. I thought she'd actually take it uh, much worse than she actually did. At least she knows now, so she can actually make a constructive decision whether she wants to keep it or to sell it. Really excited we can, I can take it back home and maybe even one of our children can learn to play the guitar. In Mallorca, after a long conversation with the office, James finally has some news for Steve. Feeling quite nervous, to be honest with you. Excited as well. Um, looking forward to what James is going to offer, um, if anything at all. Um, so we'll see. Just waiting for him to turn up. I'm looking for uh, around about £150,000. Uh, 200,000 euros would be absolutely brilliant. Steve. Hello, mate. You all right? Good morning. I'll have to see what happens. It, it's all going to come down to what he offers me, really. So, Steve. Yeah. Um, look, we've been doing a lot of work on it. I've been in touch with the guys at home. Yeah. And uh, they've been uh, researching the second-hand market and so forth. And uh, I know you're looking for around to €225,000. The second-hand market for these particular boats apparently is very strong. Yeah. So I'm being told that there'd be quite a lot of takers for this. Right. 
So what I'm proposing that we do, I know you want to sell it, ideally. Yeah. But if it helps, I would be able to facilitate a loan against it whilst right. you try to sell it or we can sell it. So uh, I've got some, we've got some yeah, time so you've got to, to decide. Yeah, a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. I can get you to £125,000, wow. which is a little bit short of what you wanted, but at the end of the day, it might see you through. Mate, that is fantastic. But that's all you out. That's going to be unbelievable. And then hopefully we can sell it and then I can pay off the... Yeah, I mean, you've got, then you've got 12 months, so you can, you can carry on advertising the boat. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we can advertise it and you've got months now and we can, you can chill out a little bit, you can get on with your business and... Uh... Mate, that's really... That's, yeah? That's helped me out a lot. Fantastic. It's helped my business. So, mate, thank you so much for your help. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Cheers, Steve. Yeah, Thanks. I really it's appreciate pleasure. it. And no I'm problem. sorry about you being sick yesterday. <laughs> no problem. You'll never go on a boat again. Never. <laughs> never. Not down there anyway. Not Don't go. The Always go to the toilet off the back. Definitely. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Um, I can't believe uh, he's come up with that so quickly. So I've got that money now. I get some stabilisation, kind of like get a house, um, put the money in the business. It just basically takes a lot of the pressure off. So that's great. I'm really, really pleased, actually. Well, this is what we do. We go around the world and we look at these weird and wonderful things and sometimes we can put a deal together and it couldn't have got any better, really, to be honest. I can afford to buy you some good food now. Yes. <laughs> Dealing with the office expansion, it's been a busy couple of months for Joe. Oh, shit. I, didn't know you, I didn't know you was coming back. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> Did you sleep me then? I'm lying on the sofa, <laughs> you feel that? Well, I never get a break, James, so, you know. It's a great idea, that little sofa. Thanks for that. After close examination, Patrick's made a decision about whether to make an offer on Rosie's handbags. Come on, there we go. I'm petrified, to be quite honest with you. I don't know why, and I can't say why, but I am. She's hoping the bags will raise the £20,000 she needs to set up her doggy boutique. It means everything to me. Without this money from the banks, I'm not able to raise the rest of the money. Oh, God, here we go. Hello. Hi, is that Rosie? Yes, it is. Oh, hello, afternoon. Patrick from Prestige. Hello, Patrick, how are you? Very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, right, I had a good look at your bags. We've gone through it. Yes. Um, I know you're looking to raise about 20,000 for your dog business. Yes, so for, the, for the Bam Bam Boutique. What's it called? Bam Bam Boutique. Bam Bam Boutique. Oh, right, OK. Um, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm done. I have good news for you. I've had a really good look at them. Mm. The condition-wise, I mean, the, the Hermes bag, I'm not really happy with the quality of the leather and everything. It doesn't have the box or the... The um, rain jackets and things like that. The uh, Louis Vuitton as well, I'm not really happy with condition-wise. It wouldn't be something we'd want to buy. Patrick, now let me tell you something. Yeah? The, the, the both bags are in mint condition. And I am absolutely gobsmacked that we're having this conversation yet again. Mm. Yeah. I'm not accepting this. So basically you're saying you don't want to buy the bags, you don't want to buy mint condition bags and mint condition um, Birkin bag. There's a lot of things on here that I'm not happy with with the bag. There's a lot of things, there's nothing that you can't be happy with because it's in mint condition. Well, that's your opinion, that's fine. My, my, my opinion is my opinion, your opinion is your opinion. At the end of the day, I wouldn't buy these bags. All right, so I will go now to Hermes and to, and to Louis Vuitton and tell yeah. them that you don't like their bags. Yeah, you can do that, that's fine. It's just not for me to buy. I don't want to buy these bags, so these we're particular back bags. Square one. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Rose. Bye. Okay, bye. I am livid. How dare he? He doesn't want the bags. Get out of the job, Patrick, because you obviously don't know your business. If I'm not happy with the bag, I will not buy it. I just won't buy it. And because I'm protecting the business, I'm in business and we're in business to make money. I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. What's he going on about? The bags are in mint condition. I've never heard anything so absurd in my whole life. Well, I don't think Louis Vuitton or Emmys are going to be very happy, are they? I can't. I, I... 
Sometimes you have to deliver bad news to clients and they don't always take it well. I'm just so glad it was Patrick on the other end of that phone and not me.